I also found out that this is an AP-10. This is all the information on it, if you needed to know that. Hey guys, welcome back. So today in the shop, on the channel, we are going to be tearing into a Ryobi 10 inch planer. Now a little bit of backstory on this planer. It was once my granddad's planer and it is a little bit newer model, a little bit newer. This was, he probably bought this in the late nineties, early thousands. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't done a whole lot of research on this. But I want to go ahead and tear into it. I got a few things. I have at least one thing I need to replace on it, and it's the extension cord for it. Well, just simply the power cord for it. And you'll see here in a bit that that is really bad. Because I had actually, soon after I had gotten it, I had wound up taping it up because it was just started flaking off real bad. The rubber cover for it. So that will be replaced and I'm going to just simply be going through it, cleaning it out, making sure everything's operating correctly and lubing things up and making sure that the blades are sharpened along with making sure that it will just work and function properly and safely. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. So this is the planer and stand. He had made the stand years back soon after he had gotten it. I am sorry about the lighting, but it is just a simple Ryobi 10 inch surface planer. I also found out that this is an AP-10. This is all the information on it. So if you needed to know that. And this is the just simple on and off button here. You got the gauge over there with that little yellow tab. The crank for it is here on the side. It's, it even has its own handle, carry handle, and I believe over here is just simply the leveling system for it. Whenever you go to crank it, I think there might be a chain or something behind that cover there, but we'll see. And I've got a bunch of stuff inside there that uh, bolt, main bolt to carry it up and down on this side, as you can see there and same over there so I, I guess there's not a chain on that side i guess was, that cover actually does that up but i've got to figure out the power because it just simply goes into the back there and i was looking at this before started recording and i could not figure out how to get that popped open so I want to do some trial and error to figure out how to take that off. So I want to go ahead and get the camera set up and go ahead and try to get this to where it's got a little bit better lighting for you. I want to go ahead and get this thing a quick blow off and start taking stuff apart. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take off this top. That way I can at least get the top of this exposed and be able to work with this a little bit better. And there's just simply Phillips heads screws there's four of them on each side all right okay so i got a cross member here all right so i got two pieces uh two screws wing nuts on each side of this cover here Let's see if I can pull if if I pull this off. Let's see what it would do for me for this. Probably not a whole lot, if anything. All right, so I got the screws off. That came off fairly well. Here's the blades right here. They don't look bad at all, really. Probably need to buff it up, buff them up a little bit with some sandpaper probably not bad after that i'm still not understanding how this is this cover is supposed to come off yet i am going to go ahead and unhook it here 
And there's a support right here with a wire, wrap around a wire. I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. Yeah, this is what I was saying earlier. I had to wrap it real good. Because it was just in terrible, terrible condition. I'll have to figure out how to take this off after a bit. But yeah, I see. Uh, well, maybe not. Right here, you can see how it's just peeling back. And that tape, yeah, it took it all the way from that joint all the way down using black tape. Um, go ahead and, as I'm going, I'm gonna try to kind of clean and spray stuff using the old PB blaster. Um, all right. Now, to replace these blades, just looks like a bunch of bolts across the top there. Let's see if I can. See those bolts? There's a bunch of them across there to be able to replace them. Now, how does this come off? All right, well, I'm going to shut the camera off for now. That way you're just not watching me walk around this daggone thing trying to figure this out. Uh, so I'm going to shut it off and once I figure this out, I'll turn it back on and show you how I did, how it came off. Alright, so uh, I've been sitting here fighting this thing trying to figure out how to take it off. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and take these sides off and basically completely dismember this daggum thing because I just, just take, it, take it completely in parts. That way I can go ahead and get it apart and on the workbench and just spread out and go ahead and uh, get all that figured out. Now for these sides here, there's two bolts at the top here and this side that I've already taken off. And there's four more down here, down below. And uh, at least four more. Yeah. Get here. This one right here. That one there. Skip those two because that's the main bar going up. That one right there. And then that corner on that side. And it's the same thing on this side. Except you've got the crank on this side. So this is going to be a little bit different still has the same allen in it so i think what you can do is just simply brace the crank and turn the uh, that center bolt and that should go ahead and come on loose and then they should go ahead and come on apart once i get to that point i'll show you guys okay so one thing you need to watch out for while taking these side panels off these guys there's one per side and they go right up here on this face with that little flange see that flange right there that goes on the top, just like that, on this face. I was racking my head, trying to figure out where this thing goes, because it just fell out whenever I took this side. And I just so happened to see where the other one on the other side fell off from, so I kind of figured that out. Now, this side, you have your chains. Come on, I'm presuming that this top one here is your belt of your motor electric motor and these are this is a electric motor this one here i'm presuming is one of the rollers yeah so one of your push rollers oh pull i guess pull rollers so if you need to change out your the chains this would be the side the side with the crank the side with the crank is the side that you need to take off to replace these belts oh these <laughs> these chains and they do have masters, master links in them. So that is a good plus, a uh, good thing. That's a big plus. The other side is where your belt's at. Your drive belt for your, ah, uh, there we go. Drive belt for your uh, actual blades, blades here. So I'm still trying to figure out how to replace the cable here this here is a cover it's a plastic cover it's got it's got a seam across here and it actually has a open spot right there just big enough for a flathead screwdriver i tried it a little bit ago and nothing was working so I, all, I, all it would do is just pry up 
So I'm still trying to get that figured out. But while I got this all apart, I'm gonna go ahead and do some cleaning on it. Go ahead and start lubing that up some stuff and go from there. Oh, hey, I just noticed. There's little silver pieces. It's fine, hon. There's little silver pieces. I just noticed there's two more on this back side. So it's actually two per panel. So look out for those so they don't so you don't lose them it looks like they had some kind of like grease or something on there to help keep them in place which it wouldn't isn't a bad idea so look out for these when you're replacing them so i want to go ahead and like i said i want to go ahead and start cleaning this up and trying to figure out how to replace this cable that's my main thing because everything else is good so far everything else is good i just gotta clean up the blades sand them down get the rust off of them and clean all this out and get it lubed up and it, it's good after that i mean except for the cable so as soon as i figure that out i'll let you know all right so i've been doing a little bit of looking and actually my wife was able to pull up an owner's manu manual for this online it did a little bit of good but not a whole lot it did does have in that manual it does have a breakdown for this, uh, for the AP-10 uh, planer. And it did show uh, how, at least how these mo this motor mounts on there, which will give me the chance to be able to take it off. So let me show you real quick. Now, as I did, as I have already shown you about the chains, it does have master link on it and everything. You will have to take this top chain off and you will have to take this belt or the main drive belt off. I don't know if it'll be any easier for you to take this cover off or not. I will find out. I'm sure it probably will be, but I'll probably end up having to take that off and take that belt off to be able to get this motor off. Now, those mounting bolts are up in here, nice. up underneath there. So we got two on that side two on that side definitely have to take those bolts out and take it off from that way so i'm going to go ahead and break them loose and get them out okay so as i was dealing with this chain trying to get it loose you will for this top uh, chain to get this master link out you will actually have to move the blades be careful they may uh, probably are sharp you'll have to spin them towards you back from back here spinning towards you ow like that don't do what i just did okay. ow nope i ain't bleeding okay. uh and it will move these chains you move it towards you it will ever so slightly rotate it down the only spot that i could find that you can actually pull that link out is right back in here where the blades come in on the other side the roll the blade rollers that's the only place that you'll be should be able to get the link out but like I said, be careful rotating that. Probably best use gloves. All right, got, I'll be back in a sec. All right, so it is just those four bolts here, those machine screws. And you do, like I said, you do have to take the main drive belt off. And I went ahead and took both chains off because it just made it a lot easier. You have to, whenever you take it out, you have to, whenever you pick it up, you have to rock it up to get this side out and then just slide it out that way. To be able to get make this side the gear to clear make sure make sure that that clears so if you have it, oh if you have it low enough you can pull it out that way but since we had it up so high and the handles off we had to fish the cable through here it is here it is awfully dirty from just from what i could tell i got the two screws on this side to take off and i don't know what else uh but those those two screws definitely have to come out and those are phillips head there and i'll just see what happens after that so yes there it does it is those two screws and this does just simply slide out you will have to watch out for that gear there but it does just slide right off now caution as i just heard it as i was moving this motor around there's a little tiny piece hold on right here right there that comes out right above your mounting screw you've actually got two i just noticed you have one on this side 
And one on that side. I got really lucky I didn't lose that one for sure. This one here. Oh, actually, either one of them. I'm lucky I didn't lose any either one of them. But those things, you've got to look out for them. So, uh, that flange there comes out on the motor. This flange here, now it's on there kind of like that. It's a shield mainly for all the electrical components in here. Now we can get to the cable. Down in here, two screws there. You gotta do those two. You can take these. These are basically screw on caps, retaining caps for that or well, for the switch. Think of these as toggle switches. You know how the toggle switches have those little rings that go on the out the face of what you're mounting the toggle switch to? That's what these are. So you just simply unscrew the, these from the face and it just simply slides right on out. And that gives you the direct access to the side that you need to be able to replace it. So, so that's how you get to this point. And these are o-ringed and connections. That's if we figure this out finally. Uh, <laughs> we can, uh, you can now, once you get that just changed out and cleaned out, you might as well clean this, the motor off while you got this open. Since now we got this speared out and you can change it out, now all you have to do is put it back together in reverse order. All right, so to solve the grounding issue, the equipment grounding, I went ahead and in this plastic cover, drilled an oversized hole through the plastic and it should be back far enough to where it won't mess with the switch and high enough to where it shouldn't be on the motor. And just for the sake of it, instead of putting it in this bottom one like it wants to, I'm gonna go ahead and run it up to the top just to help eliminate the chance of it rubbing up onto the motor. Just for those who want to deal with that, you can. This is just what I did. You might be able to do it differently, but this is just what I did. All right, so got her together, new cable. Everything came back together pretty good. Cleaned her out real good and well. I didn't see anything major while I was looking at everything. Uh, probably could have gotten away with changing the chain on it and the belt, but they all, both, all three of them actually, looked pretty daggum good. The belt, the, the belt I probably definitely should have, but I'm gonna run it until it does break and go from there. I'm not terribly concerned about it. it. There wasn't any obvious dry rot on it, so it wasn't terribly concerning. It was still pretty pliable. I got her plugged in already, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire her up. <laughs> Noisy's a little sucker, that's for sure. Man alive, that thing's noisy, Bubba. <laughs> I was checking to make sure there wasn't any kind of shocks, uh, shocking since I did grind, ground it and it wasn't previously grounded. I was wanting to make sure that it wasn't grounding out a little bit because the old cable, so the old cable was just simply a two, two wire system and Never did grab, uh, never did have a ground previously. Which, I mean, if this cable was new and everything, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. As you can see, as I was trying to explain earlier and try to show you, this rubber is just, it, it, it's peeling off. I mean, it's not in the best condition. So that was definitely needing to be replaced. But it is done, and that is the gist of replacing the cable on one of, one of these things. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night cause it is currently 10.15 and I'm gonna try to be in the hunting blind tomorrow morning, John and I are. So we gotta hit the sack. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. I did do another one on my Craftsman table saw a couple of videos back completely redid it if you want to check it out it's in the equipment refurbishing playlist if you want to check out the magnet fishing playlist i've got on the channel 
along with the leather work and there's another one. Oh, knife reviews i got three different playlists running if you guys want to go check those out you can and if you also want to check us out on facebook at the at back road hobbies or TikTok on my personal channel eli underscore hirsch i've been posting little one to three minute videos on both places on facebook i've been doing questionnaires at both places i've been kind of going back and forth on what to expect I mean, there's a bunch of that stuff going on back on the facebook deal that's where i post like i said the questionnaire stuff kind of a vo vlog type deal there if you guys want to go check those out you can if not don't worry about it i ain't worried so now i'm going to go ahead and move on to the video verse so this video verse is in hebrews chapter 3 verses 1 through 6 it says, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was in all God's household. For Jesus is considered, considered worthy of more glory than Moses, just as the builder has more honor than the house. Not every house is built by someone, but the one who built everything is God. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's household, as a testimony to what would be said in the future. But Christ was faithful as a son over his household. And we are the household if we hold on to our confidence and the hope in which we boast. And that is Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. And I'll see you guys in the next one.